Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Live Your Spa Life Show. Spa life is a lifestyle that accepts that accomplishment and harmony coexist. The spa and spa life, the SPA, is for seek power always, that power within you to do your deeper work here in the world. I am so thrilled to introduce to you today my special guest, Margot Masri, who is the founding brains and beauty behind the MM Accounting. As a multiple award-winning accounting firm, MM Accounting and CFO Solutions offers highly customized financial services, especially designed to customize business to the next level and beyond. Margot, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here. And, you know, a lot of people don't talk, talk about finances or what they're doing behind the scene. And um, I love to get into uncomfortable conversations and see how people are really moving through them. And I think people are going to see that you not only have a, a different approach, but also how you live your life. And so we're going to get a little bit deeper into that. Um, but you're known as the um, having cutting edge accounting techniques and drawing on a wealth of industry specific experiences. Um, what do you feel has had you stand out in your industry? I feel that what made me stand out was thriving to give different solutions. I find that business owners give up very quickly. Their fears, as you said before, really slaps them. And people learn to trust and to see that once they trust, that um, it just works. Um, working with business owners in this way has really stand, has stood like a different level. And um, taking through the steps of fear and talking about money and the stuff that people want to hush about has really made transformed difference in their businesses. Yeah, I love that. You know, and you know, I also love that you're known to, as a trusted partner. Like a lot of times people don't think as their financial advisor or their accountant or someone as an actual partner that they have a say in, that they get to learn and see how they can make the best of um, how they're running their business because it's not a one size fits all. And um, you know, one of the things that um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about how you help your clients to like in, enhance their growth uh, and you know with so much uh, automation and efficiency that it's available um, how do you help them have just a world-class uh, customer experience so the first thing is is being a partner with my clients is such a massive part of all the work for them to feel that I'm there on their side versus against them has really been a huge milestone with my work and their work. Um, I work with them in terms of communication. And a big thing is just putting in a structure for them to talk with me regularly, access me so that they have the questions answered, whether it's impulse or on demand, they always have a way for their answers. And automation has really changed how clients can spend their time versus them spending time on things that tools can use and really specialize in their genius zone so that they can have the business that they desire. And a lot of them, to be honest, are very fearful. They're very angry <laughs> about it. Um, and all of them say no. <laughs> and you have to, t I take them through the steps the old fashioned way and then they dive into it very quickly. And they really see how the, the freedom of time has given them back time with their family and really give them the vision that they wanted in the business. Right, so what would you find that they're most fearful of and what are they saying no to? I find that they're most fearful of themselves <laughs> and they're saying no to what they really want because they have it. I happen to be so lucky and incredibly grateful that I've worked, every single business owner I've worked for and with, and even if they weren't clients of mine and just the opportunity to talk with them, people just stand in their own way because they're just afraid. They don't realize numbers are their friend. And I say this with love, you gotta get sexy and intimate with those numbers 
because that's your best friend and there's no better way to succeed. Right. Well, it's important. I love, I love this get sexy with your numbers kind of thing, because, you know, it's interesting. It, sometimes when maybe you feel like um, you're in different seasons of business, right? You know, there's different cycles and things that happen. And if you don't know those numbers, that can actually be more fearful, right? And so knowing the numbers actually gives you a foundation to then make some decisions about how you want to shift things and what do they look like. And it actually empowers you to know that. So I love that you're really addressing that. And, you know, um, sometimes we, we definitely have to uh, master the things that we are teaching, putting out for other people. So how is it that you navigate uh, fear in your own life? So a big component when I was approached with fear was hiring a coach, a mentor to really guide me step by step and just have the answers on the roadmap. Um, I learned a lot of tools, I had a lot of support, and I had a place to go. Before that, I was alone, and I was a big hot mess. I was tense, angry, scared, and I just felt like I was this one person in the business world that had so much to give. But once I was opened and vulnerable with other people to receive what was going on and not just make my picture out to be so pretty perfect, um, that's when the scalability and that's when my business started to thrive. And having a coach, and sometimes you have to hire various ones too. Sometimes it's different areas. Um, I have for my personal life certain things that I have to go for and then for my business. And at points I had one that led for both. So depending on what you're up to, you know, is really, um, it's the present time of what, how to make that decision. Right. Well, I love that you're bringing this up because, you know, I think sometimes we have this mentality that just because we can do it all doesn't mean that we necessarily should um, or that it actually supports that. And I know that when, you know, I'm coaching and mentoring my clients, uh, a lot of times some of the things that they find themselves uh, they're not seeing some of the things, right? And I love one of the quotes by uh, Les Brown who talks about that you can't see, right, the full picture when you're in it, right? You can't see it. And so, you know, to be able to um, have someone else have their eyes on your business is such a, a smart and savvy way to go um, to have them look at the things that you, you may not even be knowing what questions to even ask. And so having people on your team that really support you through that can make a huge difference um, in your business because it's, it's so weird. I don't know if you found this, like it, we kind of have this feeling like when we go into business, like we should already know everything about it right? So, <laughs> almost every one of my clients start off on that way. Right. And when I really just want to break down that client in the most loving and positive way, I say, you're shooting all over yourself. Right. And you have a genius zone in your business and it's okay to outsource and it's okay to delegate because you're having somebody who is focusing on that area. And a lot of the entrepreneurs that I've worked for over the years, it was really hard for them. And that was probably the biggest part of the first stage. And I would say it's the first three, four months of the relationship because slowly breaking that down and pivoting them into the right direction because it doesn't always happen the first round. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong or bad. It just means we need to pivot in a different direction. And all my clients have access to me personally, in addition to my team. We have a system, but phone calls and communication are just so important because I'm not there in their daily lives and people just assume, and it's not what accounting is about. What makes business dynamic is their genius zone. And once you walk into that world of walking with an accounting person as your partner, it's a bridge between a coach and knowing your numbers instead of having to choose. And a lot of people don't realize that you can get that in one place. 
Yeah, I love that. No, it's so helpful. And, you know, um, we want to be conscious, right, about how we create anything in, in our life and our business. And I know there are several ways that you consciously create your life. And um, I'd like to share a little bit about um, how you are bringing about your dream clients and also how are you working on your own terms? So my dream clients, um, it took time to design that because um, even once you think somebody is your dream client, um, it may not go that way and it may trigger you. Um, to a degree, my dream clients are the old Margot that I can bring them to the new Margot and beyond mm -hmm. and helping them see that vision. Yeah. Um, I love that you recognize your own path, right? It's so important. Like sometimes when we get to a certain level of success, one, you may not realize that you're like now ready to go to another level, but sometimes it can be challenging to remember where you came from and that there's so many lessons along that way that those are some of the best nuggets that we can actually share with our clients are things on our own path. So I love that yeah. past Margot Margo, and uh, <laughs> future one. <laughs> Literally, because... I find that those stories, it takes the clients into that zone of like meeting them where they're at right. so that they can have that um, as well. And I do live my life on my terms. Um, I've implemented time where I implement strategy. Um, I also have a, strat I have a process with my clients on how we work together. I have an onboarding system for myself personally, um, every quarter I take downtime where I completely deplug. Um, one of my, my, I don't wanna say one of my favorite places, but my favorite place is to go down to California and I go into the mountains and I literally with nature, I journal, I do a lot of yoga and I really just connect to my inner self. And those are my best blogs, my best posts that I bring back to just really, really recharge. Um, and also with the clients, they respect the process, how they can contact me, you know, not, not nine o'clock plus at night, even though there are those standalone special uh, clients who, you know, I would do that with. Um, but it doesn't come to that because they appreciate the process. Right, right. Well, I know sometimes we think of, uh, you know, stereotypically accountants and bookkeepers as, you know, very either rigid or stoic or just, you know, in their head, right? It's, it's a numbers thing, right? So we don't necessarily see the, the self-care and the things to nurture yourself and what that looks like. So, um, you know, how is it that you um, have really incorporated that? How did you decide to really um, bring those kind of things into a very linear process? So self-care for me was, it was like staring me in the face because I felt like my success was like at its end. I really felt like I was at the end of like that lane and I was just stuck. I didn't feel good. I would wake up in pain. People's response to me and what I had to say, it just didn't feel right and it didn't seem right. And getting into them in a different way once I took care of myself and incorporated that and shared that with them they realize that it's okay. It's almost like people need permission because they feel like business is, you know, this uh, suit and hat type idea of like this rigid, stern feeling, you know, but what brings the most is when you get into the body and you do some type of like dance or yoga or running, uh, some type of movement where you can really feel your direction. Um, Clients are on, feel odd with it, but once they step into it, they really love it, and it just becomes second nature and no other way. Yeah, um, you, I love that. No, it's so great that you're incorporating those things in your life. And, you know, there's a newer book out. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Financial Sobriety. And mm -hmm. um, I know the author, uh, Matthew Grisham, and uh, he really talks about the, um, what like real wealth is. And, you know, yes, there's the getting your numbers together, but, you know, sometimes people are, have this 
idea of what they are working towards and kind of like keeping up with the Joneses and, and those kind of thing and really looking at what they value in their life and really looking at what are those things that recharge them? What are those things, how they want to do it? Um, I was just thinking that'd be a really great resource um, for your clients. Absolutely. So I would love to read that book. And I was that person too. Um, I was, I was going to say beaten down by my sales goals, but where I'm making the most money is by serving my way, not like in a control way, but how I know works. And I have less clients, but bigger projects and I make more money. And the ideal way is clients is always, it's like by volume and sometimes just doing what you are naturally doing can make you more money by putting in the right systems and processes. But exactly what you just said, you know, building wealth, it, it could overly really take you. And I was definitely a person who had that. I would look at my sales goals and you definitely should, but it's also just how you take them on and really carry them out and, you know, just enjoy the process. That's really such an important thing. Right. Yeah. Well, and, you know, we look at this journey and, you know, in business and in life that there are certain things that um, disempower us along the way to standing in our power. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit about some of those things that have disempowered you along the way, um, you know, especially around like client rejections, right? There's this no one wants to have that happen. It's part of business. And um, share a little bit about how that uh, disempowered you in the beginning. So sales calls at the point when clients would get angry was a very big trigger for me. I would, my whole body would get shaken up. And to the degree where I would be like, oh, that's not my ideal client. Mm -hmm. But when I really worked to really understand that those objections was really what was bringing them in. Slowly, I would listen to my own sales calls, which was horrifying. <laughs> uh, I would have my coach listen to them for me and only receive the feedback that way. Um, but that process has really taken a massive, massive good toll for me um, to help my clients get the right clients and help people who I never thought. Right. But what was it that made that shift for you? Because there's a, a I think there's something that clicks in uh, every business person where they discover something that's maybe not working for them or, or how they're being or what shows up for them um, to then have that moment, kind of like that aha moment of realizing what is not working and what to do about it. What was that moment for you? So my coach at the time would tell me, you know, if something persists, you know, would be like, why does that persist? Mm. And in addition to that, it was coming together with me that this client wasn't going, this specific client wasn't going away. He would be like, Marco, I want to work with you. I'd be like, oh, that's awesome. But just maybe not today. Like just something like, you know, nothing and, and a really not powerful answer. And I would hang up the phone and it didn't go away. And he would be like, he was, and he was actually one of my best clients. Um, actually all my clients, I don't like to say it that way because every client is best in a different way. And he just wouldn't go away. And he's like, I just really want to work with you. And I, I took a deep breath. I got onto the phone and I just had more patience and I listened and I was, and I was like, okay, I could do this. And it just opened up the doors to more things. And I just realized sometimes, you know, where that part where it just keeps persisting, that's really where your energy needs to go. And um, I have to say, it was, it's, it's freeing. It's yeah. freeing when you can sit with that type of information and then transform someone else. There's no better feeling in the world, especially because if people think of accountants, boring, <laughs> boring people. Like, I mean, but I don't think people look at me that way anymore. They come to me in that different light because you just got to get intimate with your life so that you can get that next level. Right. 
Well, I think one of the key words that you said is, you know, listening more. I think what happens when we're fearful, and I know this has happened with me before with, with clients, especially on sales calls where, you know, if you're feeling nervous or not particularly confident that day or things, you may end up just talking more to kind of like cover up that nervousness. But when you really get to the place where you're listening and you can actually hear and, you know, really know the ways that you can support people, uh, I think people end up selling themselves, right? Because they can hear themselves talk and see what they need. And they're coming to you because, you know, they are in deep hope of, of you being able to solve that for them. So just coming from a different framework from it can make such a, you know, a huge difference in, in what that looks like. And, and I think it's important to, you know, really look at what are we, sh you know, showing, how are we showing up for people and what that looks like. And, you know, when we talk about what are the things we do to restore ourselves, it reminds me of looking at our environment, right. And what that looks like. And uh, as you know, one of the things I love uh, asking uh, my guests is um, about their environment, like what you have created in your space. And so we have different experiences in our bedroom versus our office versus is our kitchen. Uh, so what is your favorite room in your home and why? So my favorite room is my bedroom. Um, I decluttered it and I created myself a corner with uh, some crystals, uh, my yoga pillow or meditation pillow. Everybody has their different names. I journal there and it's just like a serenity place. It's like a calm place yeah. that, um, it's just to like decompress from the day because there's just so much as a mom, as a business owner, as Margot, <laughs> um, you know, having that calm place, it's just, it's so important. Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny. I was just speaking with one of my guests earlier, um, for those who've heard, uh, listened to uh, Megan Fenyo. Uh, we were just talking about uh, the bedroom was that for her as well. And I'm seeing a kind of a pattern of that with a lot of my guests because creating a sanctuary um, that's yours to allow you to restore and have things in it that really help you makes a huge difference in um, looking at all the things that can pop up in your day and to be able to reset that button and, and be able to show up in your day much more powerfully. So I, I love that. That's awesome. So thank you for that. And I know that um, our listeners are going to want to stay in contact with you. And also um, you have a checklist. Um, you have a free gift for our listeners who are, are listening here today and who are either live or on the, on the replay is um, talk a little bit about your checklist and um, what people can expect from that. So this checklist, I'm really excited to share. It talks about the three levels of business. The, the launch stage when you're trying to prove concept, the growth stage, and then the scale stage. Um, it talks about the different levels of income. I find that people are deciding finance or marketing. So this checklist helps you decide what stage that you're in to help you keep in your lane. And the name of the checklist is where marketing and finance dance so that you don't have to open social media and feel like you should be doing more or different or not have enough money or you're not good enough. It's a really good guide so that you can know where you are in business and be aligned and stay in your lane. Uh spoken like a true, true person that has structure in their life is to, <laughs> <laughs> is to really, you know, it's important to know where you're at, right? If you don't know where you're at, you can't get to where you're going. So I love that. And thank you for offering that to our, our guests. And we'll put uh, in the show notes, uh, a link to get that and the different ways to um, stay in contact with you. Do you, uh, Margo, have any final thoughts for our audience? I enjoyed being on today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, I would love for you to follow up with me. Um, you know, live your vision. And if inside your gut and your heart, it's telling you to do something, just follow it. When I decided to make that decision, it just changed my life. I never felt freer, better. I don't have doctor's appointments like I used to or going for pain. You know, there's nothing like living your vision and being able to help someone else. 
Mm, I love that. I know you had shared with me that that's um, part of how you are stepping into having more courage and being a positive disruptor is really aligning that part between heart and mind and to listen to the next step. So that's a very powerful um, you know, stance to be in and uh, something that we can uh, share out with the, the listeners to really take that to heart as well. So thank you so much, Margo, for being here on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, you got it. And for our listeners, uh, you know, as always, your time is the most precious resource that we all have. And we thank you so much for being here with us on the show. Uh, we'd love for you, whatever platform you're on, to put in some of the comments, like, what's your big takeaway? What are you going to shift in your life? You know, you, there may be something in there that triggered for you to take another action step and to move forward. Um, definitely want to make sure you get uh, the checklist uh, for Megan. Uh, and make sure that uh, you uh, rate and review the store the stores I'm sorry <laughs> rate and review the show so that uh, you can um, get more of this right we want to have more positive you know conversations out in the world and so you know please share this get it out this is how you can be part of a community um, that is reaching out and tag some of your friends and just be part of the movement of that and so until we connect again live your spa life bye for now bye bye bye